Hi. Hello. <laughs> hey, hi, hey, hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's live again. 11 days straight for the first time in like, I don't know when I last did 11 days straight. That's fucking crazy. Lonely Loaf, thank you for the 32 months. <laughs> That's, all right, wait, listen to this. Listen to this. And all this is. <laughs> <laughs> Lonely Love's subscriber message is Hey Atrioc, whenever I repeat one of your stories to my girlfriend, I just say my friend because it flows better. But recently she found out and is making fun of me for it. So can you confirm that we are indeed friends for her? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, of course. We are best buds, Lonely Love. Send her this clip. When you tell this story to her, it's going to be so funny. As long as that 32 month sub stays going. Uh, hello. Uh, CSGO Sigma. Thank you for the seven months. The f five years of retirement is not what I thought it'd be. You've been retired for five years, CSGO Sigma? That's crazy, right? <laughs> Your profile picture is a picture of Hershey's s'mores. Sounds like your retirement's doing great. Oh, ah. Uh, Russick, 21. Thank you for the 10 months. Mr. Chick. Dude, I ate too fast. Oh, I tried to eat before stream so you guys wouldn't have to see me eat for like the 10th day in a row. Oh, but I just wolfed it. I housed it. Oh, I ate too fast. Do quickly. God, this is the price, the sacrifice. What I do for my stream. <laughs> It wasn't soup. I don't eat soup every day. I had soup one day. English teacher tried teaching us about colons today. Like, be professional, little bro. Don't say. <laughs> can we have like a designated stand-up segment where you can all do your little jokes? Like, just d save it. Um, I had soup like one time. I had soup like one time. I'm not. There's not. An overwhelming amount of soup. Pop can hop. They give it 23 months. Boom. Zip. Uh, hey, Big A. What has four legs? It's green. And it can kill you if it falls down from a tree. Four legs. Green. And can kill you if it falls down from a tree. Hey, babe. Yeah, I am streaming. What has four legs, it's green, and it can kill you if it falls down from a tree. An alligator. <laughs> I guess it could, right? Yeah, it definitely will. And that could it will. Yeah, it would. It's heavy enough. It would fall right on you. Okay, is this a, a riddle or a joke? I have a, no idea. It's just chat rambling. You know what I'm saying? Hi, babe. Mm, man. Oh, squeeze and then pop. What is that? Ling gave me this. Isn't it nice? That's so nice. Yeah. It's fucking nice. Well, that's a really nice gift from Ling. Yeah. I'll get it. I wish I got you this. Why can't she just return it and then I buy it for well, you? Well, because you got me this, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The bird body. It arrived. Check this out. The bird body. Baby, you're going to love it. Yeah, I guess. Like, look at the fun photos it Baby, takes. I don't, okay. I'm just glad it's solar, so I don't have to charge it. You don't it. have to charge it. Are you sure there was, like, that enough power? Look, look at these photos like it's that. It's fun. <laughs> I just don't want to charge it, though. It's solar. That's the cool thing. You just mentioned that. that's enough energy, though? Like, you might get a squirrel in there. I don't like squirrels. Like, look at that squirrel over there. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about this. <laughs> have you told them that I say that for everything? <laughs> I, mean, I don't think we have this many varieties of cool bird in my We record. do, actually. So, I don't win. know what you're thinking. Win, win. So, we have a very special bird that no one else has, actually. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Hey, you made me this, right? No, your mom got it for you for Christmas. Oh, where did she get it? I don't know. Like, T Public or something? I guess. <laughs> uh, I just really don't think that the solar is enough. Well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Um... Does Ari still only have birds on her Animal Crossing island? She hasn't played Animal Crossing, but yes. But yeah, it's like, she does have an ethno state. I had yeah, I had in to, Animal Crossing. Like uninstall it to make more room on the Switch, so I haven't played it in a long time. But it's all there. 
interesting. <laughs> Awkward. I guess because there's no insects, you know. There must be yeah, all insects. well, there's certainly no goats, yeah. oh, as I remember oh, Jose's name getting kicked off the island. Uh, babe, it's not New Year's. You can't floss anymore. I can't even fly. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you something. What were you going to ask me, babe? I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. What? Um, Number one. Big uh, dog. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> oh. Did you do that or no? No. Okay, and then I guess second thing can wait. Okay. Yeah, after. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, I like how the entire time it's just Joel. <laughs> I like the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Like it's pretty cool. They do love the Joeler. It's like so funny. They spin those fish round and round. <laughs> uh, Ari stream. When are you gonna stream? No, yeah, what's your big stream? Bird watching stream. I cosplay no stream. I stream so it's not gonna work you can play me. Slay the Spire. Ooh, we did that already. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's like people think streaming is easy. It's not. So true. It's like exhausting as hell. So and true. And it's like embarrassing and cringe. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, babe. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on the stream. And actually, it's not like that at all. But. It's... We do uh, really appreciate the chatters that make it bearable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We oh, do yeah, not. Here. We do not. Do not give them false hope on that one. Just a quick Chevron. Oh, Chevron? All right, we got to get the cat involved. <laughs> He's such a fat cat. <laughs> He's a fat long cat. He's a sweet Tongo for sure. What a long ass He's cat. cat. Well, and he loves exploring and investigating. Like, what a Chevron. <laughs> <Barely. laughs> he does not Very want it. Poor Tingo. He does not there. want it. All right, bye. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm just going to wash the blankets. All right. Oh, man. I ate way too fast. I was just trying to not eat on stream, so I housed it. Uh, that is the Ray Allen of cats. I don't know if that's a reference that I get. I mean, I know Ray Allen, but what? Is he just tall? Or what are you, what are you trying to say? Uh, it's so hard being your favorite chatter. Is that the case? Incoming callers, you are. You have a hundred messages in here, and you're. I'm sorry, you're all. <laughs> this is your chat history, okay? Today, you said this is your first message. I'm the only bearable chatter. Next message. Everyone else is a bad chatter, but me. <laughs> Third message, it's so hard being your favorite chatter. <laughs> All of your chat messages are about how great you are and how everyone else is bad. And then for some reason, the people you're insulting are calling you based, <laughs> which is crazy. They're like, they're cocked in some way. Uh... <laughs> Uh, hey, Big A, would you rather have elven ears or hobbit feet? Aren't elven ears, like, wouldn't people already pay for that? Isn't that kind of cool? Elven ears? I don't know. I feel like elven ears is not that bad. People, people want that. It's like a cool style thing. Hobbit feet is like kind of just nasty. I mean, I don't think I would want nor pull off elven ears. I mean, I might do hobbit feet because you could wear shoes and socks and hide them, right? But, like, realistically, elven ears is probably the better choice. Did he... Feet to brag. What are you bragging about? <laughs> You're going to try and imply that your package is big because you have gigantic hobbit feet? <laughs> is that <laughs> That's your opener? You have weird misshapen feet that are overly hairy for the rest of your body and you're going to be like <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't I don't think that would work. Uh hairy feet, hairy genitals. Well, that's <laughs> 
that's not even like a benefit to anyone. No one's impressed if you're gonna imply how hairy they are. That doesn't that's that's L Riz, as we might say. Harry feet, Harry Potter. Think about it. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you're doing like a a homonym into a millennial thing, I guess. There's something there. Um playing any game today. Don't rush me. <laughs> right? We know that. We know that's the, the one simple rule. Probably the only thing I really banned for. Don't rush me <laughs> into any action, okay? We got to get our vibes on. The vibes are fun. I want to hear whatever I get the vibe. Uh, but I am going to play a game today, actually. Actually. Uh, so, how about that? But maybe I don't... Maybe I don't... Reveal it just yet. That way you can all guesstimate. Um... All he did was ask. Perhaps. Perhaps all he did was ask. But the way I read it as is like. <laughs> it's like hurrying me along. <laughs> you know, it's like, so any games or what's what's the game today? Do you know what I'm saying? It's that's what it feels like. It feels like a little bit of like. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a you problem. Well, I'm not the one who gets banned for it. So it's not really a me problem. <laughs> Right, it's that. I mean, it's their problem. They, I am causing the problem, but it's not. It's not my problem. Um, do 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 do. Twitch can ban you. How can Twitch ban me? Twitch can ban me for banning my chatters. That'd be crazy. That'd be a crazy twist on their part. Ah. It's what if, what if what uh a, <laughs> my uncle is Dan Clancy you're done kiddo can I just say this about Dan Clancy Dan Clancy is the CEO of Twitch all right and because the bar was so low with Emmett it's generally agreed that he's doing a pretty good job <laughs> you know like he's he's connecting to streamers in a way but I have uh, come across the information that Dan Clancy is fully remote in a tiny, tiny town of like 2,000 people um, and is essentially, to my understanding, trying to like... <laughs> Trying to like buy out this town, like almost like have his family uh, really deeply rooted in the town. Uh, and again, while working remote, that's fine. I do think, here's what I'm saying. Here, here's, let me get to my actual point. My point is that I think the morale of streamers to the CEO of Twitch has improved. If you're a streamer on Twitch, especially the bigger streamer, bigger than me, you feel like you have a better connection, a better in to Twitch and what's going on. And you feel like the CEO at least kind of understands. That's true. But if you're a Twitch employee, I feel like the CEO traveling around to all these different streamer events and living remote and never being in office while firing a third of the staff, I feel like the morale of the employees is like an all-time low. It was already nosediving when I left. Um... Uh... So, I just feel like if you're a Twitch employee, it, it just can't be a good time. I just can't imagine anyone there. Actually, I know people there, <laughs> and so this is this is confirmed. But it's just not a it's just not a good vibe. Hey, Shrock, how do you feel about me being able to download VODs and transcribe them? It's fine. One of the employees I know has problems with Dan for this very reason. Seeing him streaming, going on events, doing dodgeball when the company isn't profitable doesn't make him feel good. Yeah, I, I think that's that's my honest take is that like I can see it from both sides. As a streamer, I was like, all right, well, this is cool. But as like an employee, I feel like I'd be like, damn, we <laughs> shit's bad. The, 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 nobody's motivated. Uh, everyone keeps getting fired. We haven't had a good product in a long time. I don't know. That would I, that would that would bum me out. Uh, 
It's almost like being a CEO is tough and you can't please everyone. <laughs> Holy shit. He was some fucking sides with that boot. What are you talking? That's why they get paid a lot, bro. That's why they get paid fucking millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> And it's a yes, it should have a little bit of challenge to it. It's not a fucking check in, check out job. Uh that's why it's a that's why it's a job at all. <laughs> if you can't make the tough decisions. Uh do you think executive salaries will ever come down? Uh yeah, sure. Yes, I do. But I don't I don't have an idea where or when. It's like a case by case basis. I think um, executive compensation is often wasteful, wastefully high. And so companies that can find a way to not spend that much will long-term outperform. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> the problem is <laughs> the CEO who you've hired to run the company always will say that it needs to be paid more. Uh <laughs> Hey, H Rock, should I get a third monitor? Uh, sure, go for it. Uh, H Rock, I thought for a minute you were throwing back a bottle of Heineken. Cheers, my friend. Uh, no, it is a San Pellegrino, but I wouldn't mind a Heineken. What's wrong with one Heineken? Um, I remember when I, it was a little bit after I was 21, I went to Vegas with my dad and the first beer we ever drank together, we just got a Heineken. <laughs> and my dad was like, this is a cool moment, having a beer with my son. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, and then I think I punted every dollar I had to my name on craps. <laughs> Which was only like, I don't know. 300 bucks. I think that was all the money I had after I got back from Korea and I punted it, but still a good night. Uh, I've never seen someone guzzle San Pellegrino like that. I'm not, I'm not guzzling. I'm drinking it. <laughs> I, I take the bottle and then I drink it. I didn't, <laughs> I'm not like fucking Minecraft potion drinking. Um, if I was the CEO of Twitch, I would gift myself 1 million subs. You guys have the worst, like literally the worst uses of wishes. <laughs> like all, all of your, all of your, your wish at your infinite Chipotle when you own a franchise and your, your CEO, like all their things that will have consequences for you. Uh, you, this is like a fantasy situation. You could just have the money. If you're already imagining that you're the CEO of Twitch, why don't you just imagine you have a million subs already? You know, the fact that you're going to be the CEO and then abuse that power to steal what $5 million from Twitch <laughs> is going to cause you problems. It's going to cause a ruckus. Uh... Two point five, really? I assume you gave yourself a better split. <laughs> if you're already in the back end adding free fake subs, why wouldn't you just add a better split? <laughs> I'm gonna steal five million dollars, but I'll make sure two point five of it goes right back to the company. Why? Uh, gotta keep love of the game. I guess love of the game. I love that. Itrock, can you please blow over the top of the bottle like a flute? I like the sound it makes. That's so fucking hype. <laughs> that is so fucking hype. That is fucking sick. Uh, blow at a 90 degree angle way. Like.
Literal chills. Oh, holy shit, dude. Uh... <laughs> not Gabra. Well, you know, Gabra's really good at his job. I'm not going to say I, I'm not going to try and take his job. Uh, how the hell are you? Let me thank some people, including, but not limited to, Reese2x with the gifty. Emiratus, thank you with the 17 months. Carby with the gifty. Dingly Wingly, what a name. Green Ferret, thank you with the four months. Make sure the CEO of Twitch gets half my sub. I will. I'll pass it right on to Dan Clancy, uh, who needs it more than all of us uh, to buy that town out. Aldito, thank you for the 11 months. Hey, Big A, I got my first job a year ago, and I might get a promotion sometime this month. Can I get a hell yeah? <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like doing call and response things, but hell yeah. I'm excited. That's cool. I don't like, I don't like call and response, uh, but I am happy for you. First job a year ago, promotion this month. That's exciting. Promotion in a year. That's good. I wonder, I wonder, I'm interested in what you do. I wish I had a, one of those days where I could learn jobs. Um, hey, truck, who do you think will headline UFC 300? I got a strong, like overwhelmingly strong feeling that it's going to be Xi Jinping from the top ropes. I do think he's going to come out in a uh, hammer and sickle mask, ripped it off, and then to like show people that the fucking East means business. Uh, but I have no idea specifically if that's the case. Um, Big bro thinks UFC has ropes. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna break the top of the octagon off <laughs> and then jump off the side of that. He's gonna rip it off like it's fucking plywood, dude. And then jump in from the top. Uh, I think Warren Buff I forgot Warren Buffett was alive. It was only Charlie Munger that died. How old is Warren fucking Buffett? 98? Warren Buffett age. 93. Born in 1930. Woo, baby. He is a spry 93. He's got to run for president next year. Uh... Ninety-three recessions bookend his life. <laughs> Damn, his net worth is a hundred and twenty-one billion USD. Broke, dude. I hate to say broke talk, but how can you listen to his advice? Um, Will Bro thinks the octagon has a top. All right, then he's gonna drill in from the fucking ground. It's going to be two different fighters in the octagon, and Xi Jinping is going to drill through the floor, pop out, undermine him, and then fucking... Bro thinks they have a floor. Okay. Xi Jinping is going to teleport using new Chinese teleportation technology into the fucking octagon right next to the two fighters, kill them both with his bare hands. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> we have to inform the government about this uh, yo big A did you see China outlawed wait what? are you talking about the, my video <laughs> I made before Christmas did you see China outlawed Gotcha Games revenue by eighty billion dollars? You did not follow that story. You saw a YouTube short, <laughs> bro. You did not know what you're talking about. You saw a YouTube short, and you have <laughs> you are rushing to tell me half what you half remember while fucking scrolling past Subway Surfers. That is not a correct reading of of what uh, went down, nor <laughs> what proceeded afterwards. Um, hey, big guy looking to get into Hitman speedrunning. Any tips? Have a pure soul, a sharp mind, and the wisdom of a thousand years. Uh, also, go, uh, go 
practice. <laughs> go practice, bro. It's a, it's, you just got to grind. It's a very, it's a, it's a grind heavy. It might all speed runs, but it's grind heavy. Um, Big A, I just ran out of, uh, what is this? Big A, I just ran, 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 ran. I ran a bubble wrap to play with. Can you, no, I'm not going to put on bubble wrap for you fucking brain. Uh, uh, f- <laughs> yeah, the first step of becoming a Hitman speedrunner is you got to file for unemployment. Okay, so you have a little bit of, you got to get your benefits. So you have time to grind. Um, wait, what's everyone saying? Do it. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Uh, Big A, Taiwan election in the next two days. <laughs> Are we just repeating topics I talked about yesterday? <laughs> Are you just guys informing me about things that I mentioned in Marketing Monday yesterday? Yeah, I, I talked about it. I talked about it for extensively. Uh... Did you know there's a tariff on Chinese EVs? <laughs> Did you know Cutner died in us? Uh... Did you hear about the polar vortex hitting Canada? Canadians, confirm! Confirm! Polar vortex Canada. What's going on? What is the polar vortex? What are we talking? What? It's Sunday, your edition of In the Know, the cold edition, the winter finally shows up edition. Look at this. Winter certainly is alive and well in Paradise, Newfoundland. You People live here. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. People voluntarily say I'm going to put down roots here. <laughs> I'm going to eat Tim Hortons and drive through this paradise. <laughs> Some Canadian single tear smiling, saluting. It's paradise. It's beautiful. You have been the feature in Newfoundland for some really intense winter weather, whipping winds, heavy snowfall. We this is fresh snow across Ontario and Quebec. This Alberta is so sad. For the foothills, and then look at this, the beautiful side of that <laughs> fresh snow. North Shore Mountains, over 30 centimeters of it. Look at this here. This wow. Is trail. You certainly need your hiking boots on, but wow, what a scene. You get to this view, the diffused sun in the distance, the fresh, untouched <laughs> snow. This is what January is all about. And meteorologist Rhythm Re- joining us now. Rhythm, we have a full week of real good January. Disagree. I disagree. Uh, January weather coming up, don't we? And we do. And all a boot. The polar vortex finally returning to this end of the hemisphere. It has been over Siberia, but as we head towards the end of the week, we're going to continue. So they seem like they're talking about this Arctic polar air. vortex. Definitely widespread across areas of the prairies. And then a little sliver of it does end up across areas of southern Ontario. However, that cold Arctic air is not going to be as intense as what the prairies will be Timmins? at the end of this week. Okay, as intense as the prairies, those numbers are coming up. But first, Rhythm, let's talk about the jet stream because, of course, the jet stream plays a huge role, either bottling up that cold air, keeping it in the Okay, north, I get it. It's cold. I get it. It's cold. Uh, Timmins is a tiny town. Well, they made it seem big on that map. So it's fucking cold is what I'm assuming. Everyone in Canada is telling me that it's fucking cold. Uh... Timmins has a lot of NHL players. Isn't that just Canada? That's just where they live. Uh, Aspect is using his oven to keep warm. It's really fucking cold. Uh, did you see Florida? <laughs> What's your take on Ninja becoming a massive sports gambler? Called it. Go watch the January predictions. I said big streamers will become massive sports gamblers. Uh, HRock, did you know it's cold in Canada? Wow, that's a new piece of information. Uh, warm in Toronto. Let's check and check your cap. Toronto temperature. Doesn't look warm. Doesn't look warm at all. It's fucking 34. Uh, high humidity, fucking windy, rainy, it's fine. 
That's not warm. That's not warm, dude. That, that, yeah, that's Canadian warm. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is 34? It's one degree Celsius, if that's what you want. Uh, feels fucking cold to me. LA, 55, baby. Woo! 55, 50 degree day. What's the, what's the 50? What was the, what's the stringer bell? 40 degree day. So they hit the goddamn map and we on. That cock smoking motherfucker. I love this clip. Big fish gun. We was running hard on his ass, but. I think I hit him. Nigga, you ain't hit nobody. I might have hit him. Yo, string. We hit the one girl, but after that, man, I ain't seen nobody catch no lead, man. Except for Tank. Yeah, Tank gone. The other bro dropped him. So I guess we even now. So you get one, right? Yeah. That's good. That's like a 40 degree day. <laughs> Ain't nobody got nothing to say about a 40 degree day. 50, bring a smile to your face. 60, <laughs> shit, niggas is damn near barbecuing on that motherfucker. <laughs> Go down to 20, niggas get they bitch on. Get they blood complaining, but 40, nobody give a fuck about 40. Nobody remember 40, and y'all niggas is giving me way too many 40 degree days, what the fuck? <laughs> Yikes, and you guys are down in 30 in Toronto? Yikes, bro. Stringer Bell would not approve of these 30 degree days. All right? Uh, it's minus 17 Celsius in Tulsa next week. Oklahoma? Uh, Tulsa temperature. Damn, it is cold. Uh, no, wait, it doesn't look like that. Not what I see on my thing. Minus 17 doesn't show that at all. Um, <laughs> tags about to get by a freeze, too. So, is everywhere cold <laughs> across the fucking great nation of America? Um, check Edmonton or Calgary. I'm not gonna check if you guys are cold or cold. I'm in Texas and they're losing their shit because it's below freezing for three days. Isn't Texas like, doesn't Texas always freak out when it gets too hot or too cold because the grid can't handle it because they have their own separate grid? So like if it gets even slightly too cold or too hot, everything fucking shuts down. And <laughs> That's hype. <laughs> that's like a fun, you know, that's like a fun little surprise every time. Anytime the temperature becomes annoying in one direction, you can also have the bonus of no power. Uh, greatest state in the union. God bless it. Ted Cruz heading to Cancun as we speak. <laughs> uh, what a G, dude. What a G. That was so funny because he... <laughs> He doesn't he like get there and then realize it was stupid to go and then turn around and then pretend he was just flying his daughters there to like, he, he did like a whole thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, he blamed it on his daughters. That's base. You should have wrote it out. You should have wrote it out. I was in Cancun at the time. That was I remember I was in Cancun. I should have fucking... I would have hung out with Ted. He could have come over and hang out with me and Ari. Uh, we need to frack more to get this plant hotter. Planet, you mean? We need to up our fracking? I think you're right. <laughs> I think we need to frack more, dude. Uh, Are you and Ted Kaczynski friends? I wouldn't say friends. Um, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the Unabomber? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say friends. Um, <laughs> friends is much too light a word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, friends friends is much too light a word. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't doesn't cover 
uh, the depth of our relationship. Anakin Pod Racer, thank you for the 15 months. Are you a big fan of Anakin's pod racing ability? Because really, he didn't. Shut the fuck up, Shake Drizzle. God, stop sending me messages. Bro, I'm live. Shut the hell up. Jesus Christ. People trying to get entertaining content, and all you can do is spam my Discord with more and more inane messages. Christ. Everyone in chat furious at you for disrupting what was a very highly produced segment. <laughs> Shake would take you in a fight, admit it. In a fist fight? <laughs> what about a fight of wills, of words, dude? Um... Uh... Please tell me you sent that. I did send that. He's, he, I, you know, Shake Drizzle in my life is a man that I have found to have many ops. And you might say, if someone has that many ops, perhaps they themselves are the op. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? That if you had that many fucking problems, maybe you're causing the fucking problem. Uh, I, I do need to stop that ping though. I need to stop that fucking ping so I can. I'm just gonna mute him. That'll be easier. That way I can. <laughs> that way I can still get all the messages I need. Um... Streamer mode. Yeah, I'll go back to streamer mode. Actually, I don't want to fucking have any pop-ups. Let's see. Discord. Streamer mode. Um. There, lock it in. Shutting down your... P oh, are you going to Genesis? Yeah, I am. If anyone's a Smash brother or sister, uh, go to Genesis. It'll be really fun. It's the best tournament of the year. I will definitely be there. Uh, should be a blast. Boomer Genesis? What's Boomer about it? The last two Genesis events have sucked. LMAO or IMO poorly ran. Well, I disagree. How about that? <laughs> How about I had a great time at both those events? But also, JMook won, so maybe that's why I care. Um, isn't Genesis going to break your streaming streak? Not if I bring a backpack. Oh, 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 he's not everything. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this new move, the Atriac. Oh, shit. Whoa. Oh, shit. I might bring a backpack and then enter the tournament and then stream. Hello, Atriac. Have you seen my promo for the big A awards? Fucking now I have me in Hi. one minute, 10 seconds. All right, guys, it's Evan Gao. It is January 6th. I'm in front of Oakland City Hall, and it has been three years since I've stepped outside. Let's do this. And I've been tasked with handing out. The message said, not a joke. I am majorly depressed. In case, you, in case my face covered it up. These tickets to the Big A Awards premiering on January 13th. Yeah! Wow, this video is not gonna get out in time. It'll be streamed on twitch.tv forward slash Atrioc. Okay, here's the rest of the video. <laughs> hey man, we got this show, the Big A Awards. Uh, we got free tickets if you want to see them. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> <clears throat> um, excuse me, sir. Would you why, why were they standing on a bench? What? I don't. Who does that? Who stands at? And then you're filming him at like dick height. Then that made no sense. No, they're not standing on business. <laughs> you're just word associating to fucking slang. It, it was just standing on an actual bench. You like to get one of these? Oh, no, no, no. I don't, don't want to be in your video. <laughs> okay, don't. 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 
Don't harass people like that. <laughs> this is why you brought me out here, Evan. The the big awards. Well, That's, no, it's, it's the, the big, big A. Shut, the Shut up, Evan! <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Like, I don't care about your videos. I don't care about being in these anymore. Like I, I had to buy a 30 minute part just to get here. I'm going. It's is it Walt Disney car? That's not. It's in L. A. Like we couldn't even go to that even if it was real. Like it doesn't even make any sense. Um, okay, so... Damn, that's sad. I don't think, um... I don't think anyone is coming to the no. Big Awards. Well, I mean... But, <clears throat> if you want to go, <laughs> it's, uh, January 13th on Twitch.tv Atria. <laughs> so, yeah, um, make sure to be there if you want. <laughs> is he a good actor? Wait, is Evan Gow actually a good actor? I, had, I was getting... I was feeling for him for a second. Then I remembered he backflipped in front of my office uh, in a maid outfit, <laughs> creeping out on my coworkers. And then I don't get that so. Wow. Oh, he's doing all right. The Big A Awards, January 13th, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I'm sure all of you have rented your finest tuxedo or whatever you'll be wearing um, and you'll all be showing up. I know that limos are booked out in all of LA because the demand is so high for everyone who's coming. I know that private jets, all of the uh, clear ports are booked. Um, voting is closed. Interesting. Voting is closed. Uh, so if you made your vote heard, you have a chance to influence the vote. If not, RIP. Um, I've rented the most expensive thong. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully nobody sees it. Um, sup, Big A? I learned about free market failures and externalities and shit in econ. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, hey, um... The things you could vote for were rigged with a major ACLU bias. I think more likely that the nominations were determined by activity and activity was concentrated in the ACLU discord. And so people voted there and that's what, and so <laughs> more likely that's what happened. It's not a fucking rigged bias revolution situation. Hey, big A, I'm going to get relocated from my job. What do I need to know? Where are you getting relocated? Little bro. And if you don't want to say, is it a major change? Are you going same state? Are you going different state, different country? Has anyone ever been relocated in here to a different country for a job? Like you got a job in a different country and then had to move? Uh, I was in the Air Force, so yeah, Germany. I mean, I guess me too. I mean, I wasn't in the Air Force, but my dad wasn't, so I had to move to Germany. Uh, I went from LA to Texas. That's not a different country. <laughs> Texans like to think it is, but LA to Texas is not a different country. We're actually both American. I don't know that you... We are both part of the same country. Uh, Canada to US? Pro. <laughs> oh, sorry, you won the lottery. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, a Canadian who has to get forcibly relocated to the United States? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, <laughs> everything in your life improved and you got freedom. Uh, I went from active to passive income. It changed my life. Hashtag Grussler. That is sick for you. I'm very, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> I don't know how you went from active to passive income, but I, I'm happy. Um, I literally want to move back to Canada. It sucks here. There's just no way that's true, right? There's just no way that's true. How, how what, what possible downsides could America have? Right? Riddle me that. <laughs> so, you know, maybe you just don't get it. This feels like your feels like Canadian cope. Guns? You want more of them? I feel like we have enough guns already. 
That's crazy. You're, you are gun crazy if you want more. We have so many. Uh... <laughs> uh, healthcare. It, I mean, how, we can't make it more expensive. <laughs> it's already forcing you to grustle hard with the amazing prices. I don't. If we made it more, it's like it would even stop. Uh, my measure of the economy is how much ammo I can afford. I see what you're saying. Inflation. Biden inflation has made your ammo more expensive so you can't stock your guns. That is a good reason. I see. Maybe you want to you want to get your guns in America then go to Canada to buy the ammo. I understand. Now I'm getting where your head's at. Um Public transit does. I mean, unironically public transit is something I get mad at in America about all the time. Just cuz we really could have done it. <laughs> we really could have stood on business as they say. And had really good public transit. It's like not that hard. We, we could have done it. We just didn't do it. Uh, even LA. I just found out uh, fairly recently that LA used to have fantastic public transit. And they got rid of it. <laughs> uh, like LA, as it was taking off, had amazing public transit. Like one of the best in the country. And then uh, it slowly got dismantled by the fucking car lobby. Um, a true measure of a country is how much tax you can avoid before the men in suits arrive. <laughs> I feel like your favorite countries are weird tax havens then. That's <laughs> it's like the Bahamas and uh, fucking Ireland, <laughs> Switzerland. Uh Adrock, do you think uh, train week is a good idea? What is train week? Speak to that, little bro. Um, I learned this recently, but it costs $200 million to lay one mile of tack for Amtrak. This chat could do it for less. We'll do it for $98 million. On God. Collectively, we will start uh, the train building society here. We will build the Amtrak one mile for $98 million. And that's a guarantee. We'll, 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 we, will, we will save the government $2 million and we will build the high quality top standards. Uh, and we're already unionized. <laughs> we have. <laughs> uh, Big A, have you read or heard of The Road to Nowhere by Paris Marx? Pretty good book about public transit in America and how and why it's broken. I haven't heard of it and I haven't read it, but it does sound interesting. Um, but at this point, I'd want a book that has really um, a lot of detail on solutions. <laughs> you know, I, I don't need more information on why it's broken. I know it's broken. Uh, I, I'll be more informed, but I still would like to have, I would have more solutions. Um, hey, truck, have you seen a P, uh, I don't have a PL box. No, I have no PL box. I, I do want to get one. Um, cause of that guy that made that sick Enron jacket and I want to get that, but I haven't set one up. Uh, see you in hell. <laughs> hey, Ishrak, have you ever considered playing the return of the Obra Din? It's a good puzzle where you're trying to piece together how everyone died in an old ship. If you like Outer Wilds, it's just as satisfying. Um, no, I, I, I only thing I've seen of it is the art style, which kind of put me off. But I could enjoy it, maybe. The problem is, next thing I have to do puzzle-wise is the DLC for Outer Wilds. Um, because it turns out that the Outer Wilds long play 15-hour video got more watch hours than a lot of videos. 
So it turns out even if you get lower views because it's really long, the people that do watch, some of them watch 10 plus hours. And so it actually worked really well um, and made money and was good and worthwhile. And it was fun for me. I didn't think, I didn't think that would make any money at all. Um, so PogChamp. So I will play the DLC for sure. Um, did this mean you'll finish inscription? Nope. <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. Um, just not anytime soon. Wait, oh, I was watching the playthrough while studying for exams. Too high, big A. Um, HR, can you please supply the masses weed for the big A awards? You got to get your own weed. <laughs> this is a bring your own weed event. Uh, what about finishing Liza P? I do want to do that. I, I saw that Charlie went back and finished it like yesterday or recently. That's cool. I, I think the game was great. I do want to finish it. Uh, I'm a little worried that I haven't played it at all in fucking, I don't know, four or five months now. And I'm going to have to remember everything. And I'm like right at like when the game is supposed to get really fucking hard and spike. So I'm a little worried about that. Um, So, but I do want to play it. Like, I, I think the game was sick. I just like the game a lot. Um, can you explain why YouTube changed their skipping ads? Money. Probably money. If I had to guess. <laughs> People were skipping so many that they weren't getting enough ad plays, so they just changed it. Probably money. Uh You block. Yeah, you can try all that stuff. I mean, all, all block stuff should work. Um, they're trying to fix TikTok brain for the greater good. <laughs> they changed ad skip. That doesn't fix TikTok brain. How would <laughs> how would that fix TikTok brain? By you watching a full ad, no skips? <laughs> if that's what we're relying on, we are relying on people being forced to watch full commercials to slow their fucking attention span down. That's cr that's <laughs> that is a sad state of affairs. If you have to yeah, you have to watch 20 seconds instead of 5. <laughs> the longest thing you've watched all week. Uh What did drop spindle say? User drop spindle. You should play Tunic. I don't know anything about Tunic except it's like cutesy. It's like a cutesy little fox. Oh, look at this fox. Tunic. Wow. Yeah. Um, I have been playing Advance Wars. Actually, it's right here. <laughs> I've been playing Advance Wars 1 and 2 Remake or whatever uh, on the Switch and on the couch. It's really fun. The game's great. Although, um, what's interesting about Advance Wars that I didn't notice when I played it when I was a kid, now that I'm playing the remake, is that everybody in this game talks about war like it's really, really fun. Like they're really excited to do it. But it does show their soldiers dying. So it'll be like a general who's like a 12 year old kid and he's like, yeah, I can't wait to test my strength in the battlefield. Let's fight. <laughs> and then they'll go into the fight and then like a hundred fucking men will die. <laughs> like you'll see them die. It'll play the animation of them getting shot with guns and dying. And then he's like, yes, that was great. I learned more about myself. <laughs> Uh, which is like crazy. <laughs> and then the other team will be like la they're laughing. They're all just laughing. And then, like, his CL will come in and be like, ha ha, yeah, that really was a great victory. Uh, it's just it's just weird. <laughs> They're all psycho, yeah. They're all psychopaths. The good guys and the bad guys. And, they, and then, like, um, like, here's a minor spoiler for the very beginning of fucking Advance Wars 1. You're, you're fighting another country, and that country thinks you're the bad guy, but you're not. They think you attacked them unprovoked, but it was all a setup. 
anyway, <laughs> you're fighting this bloody war in their territory. And they find out that like, oh, wait, we're sorry. You, we attacked unprovoked or in your territory, they're fighting you. <laughs> and then the guy's like, you know what though? We should really test our skills and do it one more time. <laughs> After they find out that you're innocent and men and soldiers have died for like the whole first third of the game, then they have another fight. Then they just pick another city and start fighting in it. It's it's really crazy. Like the whole concept of war is just treated so strangely in this game. Uh, but it is it's a fun strategy game. So, um, Hey, Shrek, I'm a VOD frog, and I usually watch on 2x speed. Would you mind talking twice as fast? Uh, I don't think I talk twice as fast because I don't really think I have the capability of talking twice as fast. I don't really know what I'm saying that fast ahead of time, and I have to also react to chat and go really quickly. But I do have a cool idea. I remember back at Twitch. Slow down for a second. Back at Twitch, um, when I was on Twitch Weekly, which is like a show that covered... <laughs> Uh, I don't know, news and topics and events on Twitch and clips and stuff. Um, we had an idea for a show called the Speedrunning News Speedrun, where it would be me and Rom Scout on camera talking as fast as possible to give the updates on what happened in the world of speedrunning that week. <laughs> it was actually a pretty cool idea. So it would be like... Um, you know, and this week, uh, Cheese 05 broke the world record for Mario 64. And we would do, <laughs> and it would, like, then we hit a button. We'd go, it would, us going back and forth, and we had splits, and we would just say one piece of news, and then it was kind of cool. Uh, and then the segment would be over. It was like a segment, you know? Uh, we only did it once, though, because it turns out that Rom Scout was never in office, he was always like traveling. So we could never film it twice, but it was fun. Um, I bought that book you recommended in the best tweets video. It's very good. Thanks, Atrog. Bro, I've been getting a lot of nice feedback about my book recs from people that actually read them. And I got to be honest with you, just being pure candid, um, I'm amazing. <laughs> uh, being pure candid actually was really nice. It's actually, for whatever reason, um, hearing that is one of the nice things I ever heard because I, because I, because nobody would read it. Nobody would go through the effort of reading it if they didn't care. And then if they read it, it probably will have some impact on your life. Because every one of those books I recommended had it in some way influenced me. Uh, so it's cool. I think a book recommendation being liked is like one of the nicest compliments someone can give you. Because books are very personal and they're high effort. So it's like a big waste of time if you don't like it. <laughs> uh so that's cool. I appreciate that. Like if, I don't know, if I tell you to watch a show or something and you like it, whatever. I mean, a lot of people like the show probably. Um, what about stream recommendations? What stream are you recommending? Mm. Hey, Big A, I was wondering if you think SBF should be in jail. I personally believe he had an unfair trial. In what way do you think SBF's trial was unfair? I, yes, I believe he should be in jail. <laughs> Do you think he didn't scam people? Do you think he was unaware uh, of the financial crimes of which he was found guilty in a court of law? I, I do agree on a larger level that I think he wasn't the only one and I would like to see the investigation continue. <laughs> um, but... He he was a big operator. <laughs> what kind of shirt is that? This is a shirt of SKT1 Faker. My dog. Well, not my dog, really. We met once. And by met, I mean we were in the same room together. <laughs> Across the room. And we locked eyes. Um, he didn't get an opportunity to bribe the... It is funny, though, that with... Um, you know, with crypto bouncing back at least having a moment again. Um, had he managed to not file for bankruptcy, like had they gotten some sort of bridge loan <laughs> to get through the initial panic of investors, he would be 
fucking chilling right now. Maybe <laughs> playing League of Legends rich as fuck. Uh, keeping the fucking scam going. And instead, he got caught out and now he's, and then he got broke and then he, now he's out. Now he's in jail. Uh, one less, did you talk about Twitch layoffs? I talked about it yesterday. I should talk about it today too. Twitch layoffs are just sad, man. I just hearing from people that I know that work there and it sucks. It sucks. They just, Layoffs suck, dude. There was layoffs at, there was more layoffs at Unity. There was layoffs at Twitch. There was a thousand person layoffs at Google. There's layoffs at um, Discord. There's, I mean, it's not, it's not a, it's not a great time. Um, layoffs at Pixar. Was there layoffs at Pixar? Well, there's a lot of layoffs, bro. And it's, it's, uh, obviously, was there layoffs at Pixar? Uh, damn, you're right. Pixar. <laughs> what a terrible picture for. <laughs> Pixar to undergo layoffs. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Awkward. Uh-oh. The pink slips right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, Pixar, 20%, 20% of the company. Yeah, these are crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you think of the Bitcoin ETF stuff? I mean, the obvious uh, joke of it is that, like, <laughs> it's just funny that the big pop in Bitcoin comes when they finally completely centralized the decentralized currency. That's <laughs> now that everybody can buy spot Bitcoin ETF through banks. Now, finally, Bitcoin. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what? <laughs> uh, well, that's the big fucking thing they were waiting for. That wasn't the whole point to get rid of that. Uh, but you know, whatever. I I don't talk about Bitcoin because I, as I've said from the since 2021, I've said I think crypto overall is a huge fucking scam. I think the only use it's ever had is for, um, the only like sustained economic use has been for criminal enterprise. <laughs> it's like the only good reason it's had to exist is for money laundering criminal enterprise. And... Uh, but I said from the beginning, from 2021, I said the only one that might be different is Bitcoin. Only because there is some theory, there is like some weight to the idea of digital gold. You know, gold is not inherently worth what we pay for it. We all just collectively decide that it's something of value. Bitcoin is also, you could collectively decide it's something of value and it's like more transfer. That's possible. Um... That is a possible use case, but everything else is useless. Uh, that's just money. No, it's not. That's, that's not. That's not just money. Um, money is printable by governments. <laughs> money has transfer fees and, and can change in value and can be added and subtracted. Uh, hey, Shark, did you see the new Prince of Persia? I'm gonna play it. Uh, I'm going to play the new Prince of Persia game when it comes out, I think, on the 18th or 17th. Yeah, it looks great. Did you see Folding Ideas video on the Intercell book? Yeah, I did. It was great. It was excellent. Uh, very, very funny. I watched that video. So you won't invest in my uh, Web5 NFT crypto reality hedge fund? I mean, I'll invest in it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it sounds like the future. Um Uh, big guy, I was wondering. Wait, wait, sorry. Did you see the fake CEO at the one crypto company that recently went under? Yeah, I did. There was a crypto company that had a completely fake CEO. <laughs> they just made up a person, uh, so that they're like, there nobody could be blamed for their fucking negligence and fraud. Yeah, it was. They just, it was a fake image, fake name, fake background. 
Their CEO didn't exist in the real world, which is crazy. Um, let me see if I... Uh, They had an actor. <laughs> Hyper versus fake CEO. The actor is deeply sorry about the $1.3 billion scam. <laughs> Woo, 1.3 billion. Getting hired as a fake CEO. He was working as an unpaid freelance sports commentator. Unpaid freelance sports commentator. Is that a fancy way of saying watching games on your couch? <laughs> Is that just watching the game with the boys and talking about it? <laughs> That's so hype. That is so, if you have any fucking uh, gap on your resume, you can put unpaid freelance sports commentator. That's That's incredible. Uh, when a friend of a friend told him about a Hyperverse gig. The contract that Harrison signed was with an Indonesian-based talent agency called Mass Focus. He got hired as presenter talent. Um, but there was actually no record of the company name. He was worried it might be a scam, but he researched the company online and decided that everything seemed okay. <laughs> Like he Googled Hyperverse and saw that they were going to the moon on their Twitter or something. Like, what? Okay. Uh, and then he pretended to be the CEO. That's really funny. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. So yeah, he probably didn't profit from it in any way. He probably just made like the flat fee, uh, agency fee here. Yeah, 7,500 over nine months. <laughs> they stole $1.3 billion and he was the fake CEO and made seven and a half grand. Yeesh. Wouldn't them asking you to pretend to be the CEO be a major red flag? Yeah, I think I would think so. I think the guy just needed the money, which is fine. I mean, I'm not, he's the guy's not the criminal. Um, uh, Hrock, did you see the branch of banks of India that was completely fake and ran for weeks and was only found out because the workers were too nice? What? Fake Bank India? What the hell? Oh, I have to pay for this? This is like Indian Wall Street Journal? Uh... Refresh. Come on. Okay. Wait. Fank Bank operating in Chennai was busted. The Rural and Agricultural Farmers Co-op Bank was active for nearly a year. Bro, this is, it's a paywall. It's all paywall. Um, hey, what is this? The Chennai police has busted a group running a fake bank in nine towns across Tamil Nadu, including Chennai. In fact, they had run these branches just like a real bank giving customers debit cards checkbooks and other things like that joining us now mr shankar jiwal <laughs> the commissioner wait they ran an actual bank is it more like the movie accepted where they like couldn't get accredited accredited for their college so they made a fake college <laughs> like is it just doesn't that just make them a real bank? Well, I mean, they have to, you know what I'm saying? They have to. Oh, great to Chennai. Thank you very much for your time. Go through what the proper channels. The modus, um, the modus operandi was to run a premises, which just looks like a bank, and then uh, accept deposits, uh, give them loans, uh, give them fixed deposits, saving account deposits, <laughs> credit card facilities, just as a bank. Yeah. Uh, run it for a while, uh, developing the faith of the people around. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> the logical train of thought is like, uh, dude, I found the ultimate fucking scam. My friend JP Morgan had the ultimate scam. He set up a bank and he made it operate just like an actual bank. They took loans. <laughs> they set up credit cards. <laughs> 
they got in with the government. They, <laughs> they gave mortgage-backed securities. They got bailed out. And they ended up with billions, trillions of dollars of assets. Yeah, it's like the Key and Peele sketch, but one level above. <laughs> uh suddenly they made a fuck ton of money over the course of many many years and as usually happens in these frauds after a while then when the quantum has crossed the critical limit just close it and vanish right it's supposed to be the plan. it's a rug it's pull it's interesting they issued even debit cards to to give that sense of credibility for customers mm -hmm. how did mm -hmm. that operate actually yeah, what is that? That they operated with one of the banks we know as of now, ICICI, which is a perfect legal transaction that as a society. They uh, okay, so they're a rug pull. Uh, what if we took people's money and said we keep it safe, but then we invest it in other companies? Yeah, that's just a bank club. <laughs> no, it's, it's not crazy for banks to invest deposit money because then they pay you interest. Uh, it's just crazy to invest it <laughs> in anything that is risky. Uh, did you watch the new leak cinematic? I already did, yeah. Are you doing a live stream for the Taiwan election? I don't know exactly what the time it is, but I'm going to stream, obviously, on Saturday and talk about it. I think it's going to be very, 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 very interesting. Actually, I wonder if there's any updates with two days left. Taiwan elections. Ooh, a visual guide to Taiwan's high stakes presidential election? Interesting. Um, looking pretty good for the Green Party. Taiwanese identity has been on the rise as Chinese identity has fallen. 63% of Taiwanese people think they're, they see themselves as purely Taiwanese. Um, only 3% see pure Chinese. Interesting. Um, this is timeline attentions. Oh, that's it. Okay, now we're just ads. That's where the fucking the story ends. <laughs> it's just ads. <laughs> the story is two graphs. <laughs> Thanks, CNN. Uh, CCP shaking right now. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I, I I don't know how they're going to respond. It does seem like the Green Party is going to win. And they're just, they've made it so, they've made their opposition so severe. Uh, and they're even mad at me for my brazen chattering. <laughs> you can't have anybody in the U.S. have any brazen chattering about this, bro. Uh, my little bro, Ben chattering. Uh... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Crazy. Uh they're calling they're calling chat out, dude. We need uh, everything needs a Twitch chat. Every uh, every election <laughs> should be live streamed with a Twitch chat. Every movie should have a Twitch chat like overlay on the right side of the When the <laughs> dude, can you imagine if you're in a theater and on the screen, there's a chat overlay on the right side, and everyone in the fucking theater has a little, has a little pad. <laughs> well, that's actually funny. What if that's a video? What if that's a video? What if I rent out a theater in LA and we hook it up with a chat overlay and then everybody's phone can connect to it in the theater. We'll put a code in, a QR code or something. And then we, then we try. <laughs> and we just see what happens. And then at the end of it, see if people like survey them and see if they enjoyed it more or less. Uh, you don't have time to set this up? Well, no, not right now, because I'm working on fucking predictions and Ponzi scheme ice But I'll have you know, I actually hired 
well, temper, like not full-time hired, but like I'm going to be working with a producer today. Uh, had a good interview and locked it. And this producer um, has worked with like Alpharad and stuff on some good videos. They've done good work and they're gonna help move things forward uh, whenever I am stalled out. It is Martin Scorsese, yes. How did you guess? <laughs> Martin Scorsese, famously known for his work with Alpha Rad, uh, will be producer. Bro, I watch NFL games and sometimes have a chat. It's miserable. Um, I pirate NFL games sometimes have a chat. It's miserable. Yeah, but I, I still think people on the whole, as time goes forward, would want to watch NFL games or NBA games with a chat. Like if there was like 100,000 people in there, I think they would like it. I don't think they'd want it on screen necessarily. Um, but I do think people will want that. Because I think I think the scrolling chat has become like the crowd. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the, almost the appeal of it. It's a, it's a small brain signal that you're not as lonely. <laughs> I, I legitimately think it's like some, there's some power to it. Um, and people like it. People prefer knowing that other people are watching at the same time as them. And uh, so I, I think that's where it's headed. I think the only reason it hasn't happened yet is because of rights issues making it so hard. Uh, the companies that have the rights don't necessarily have a good platform with with uh, chat. Um, piracy ones do it already with the chat. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, again, it have to be... <laughs> The one on Pirates websites has such a unique chat. That's like kick chat, you know? Um, but uh, if they were on like Twitch and that stuff was banned and there was like emotes and shit around it, could really, like a culture around it, it could be fun. Um, I mean, can, I, you just imagine. I want to give you like an imagine imagination section. You know how like Valorant, um, not even Valorant has like not even... Like, imagine if every NFL game was streamed on Twitch and anyone could co-stream. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Imagine that world for a quality of product. There would be so many unique takes on the co-streaming, and it would be interesting and fun ways to watch if you're a football fan. That's what I'm saying. That there would be... Um, you're imagining... <laughs> Uh, Thursday Night Football on Twitch, and it's done well, and they've done co-streams. I'm just saying Thursday Night Football is not like the premier product. Uh, hey, Big A, I was wondering if uh, micro cap stocks are the number one or two top stocks to invest in, or are they behind penny stocks? Are you doing some kind of weird joke? <laughs> the Russell 2000 is down, bro. Uh, on the flip side, I also tend to hang around the Reddit game threads and those are fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can see the culture in like RNBA and stuff. I just think people want people want that and technology is there, but the the right, the legal solution isn't there yet. And so they're figuring on figuring that out. But I think it'll get there. The big tech companies have all the money, so they're trying to buy all the sports rights. Um Um, isn't NBA, RNBA like three nephews in a trench coat? What does that mean? The entire subreddit RNBA is three nephews in a trench coat? Like Bojack Horseman? How is it like that? I don't... <laughs> Can you explain your theory a little better? Because I thought it was just a bunch of basketball fans from across the world. Why, why are they all nephews, by the way? <laughs> Are like they're, they're all somebody else's nephews or they're all one person's nephew? And if they're all one person's nephew, aren't they all brothers or like cousins or something? <laughs> well, I don't... <laughs> they're all... <laughs> I don't... I, uh, uh, everyone is somebody's nephew. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. HR, do you like the NBA or NFL more? NBA by a mile. I actually don't know shit about NFL. Uh, and I really like basketball, but I don't watch the games, which is uh, unfortunate. But I, I just, I like basketball. I like, I like the stories, like the dynasties. 
I think NBA is fun. I like the highlights, but I just don't. I don't watch the games. I need to watch. Um, uh, I mean, it's bad that like Lakers suck right now. Uh, even though uh, AD's playing good, everyone else sucks. Uh, you're there for the drama. <laughs> yeah, I'm an NBA fan for the drama. Uh, uh, they won three years ago. I didn't live here three years ago, bro. I'm I'm an LA native now. Okay, now I'm I'm locked in. You know who I'm just <laughs> I'm really coming around on Kobe. I've decided I'm a Kobe fan now. It's a little late. Well, I'm a big Kobe fan. Uh, would Faker Clutch... I'm sorry, what? Uh, you were in San Fran during Warriors era? I was. That was hype. <laughs> that was hype. <laughs> that was hype, dude. You don't know bandwagons, though, till you've been in SF during the Warriors era. <laughs> when you see a guy who just moved to SF from, like, fucking... <laughs> I don't know, Florida to start a fucking uh, money losing payments app <laughs> dump fucking a hundred grand on Warriors box seats <laughs> that's when you see true bandwagon dude when you see someone fucking face paint themselves at the Warriors that just learned what the NBA was fucking one month ago uh That's why Boston fans are the best. We are loyal and would die for our players. Who's a player that you would die for? I'm just trying to understand what you're... <laughs> uh... And racists. The big three. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Brady, he's retired. <laughs> you would die for him and he's not even playing anymore? Uh, still would. That's loyalty. That's loyalty. Uh, aren't Boston fans all notoriously racist? Have you been to Boston? They got nothing else there. The, the racism keeps them warm. <laughs> it's so fucking cold there and dreary and gray. It's like the only way to stay warm. Uh... <laughs> uh, Chicago like that too? No, dude. I actually, I've never been to Chicago until recently for this wedding. Chicago is pretty nice. Like I said, Chicago's clean New York. Chicago's not bad. It was, the city, it was nice. It was a little cold. I wouldn't. I wouldn't live there because it's cold. I, I would. I would. I, I had a much worse time in Boston. I had to go to Boston for PAX East a couple times uh, for work, and every time I was like, "Man, this city is so just gray. <laughs> it's just gray, dude. It's just gray and and sad and cold." Uh, Boston worse than NY? Yeah, I think easily. All right, stop the Boston hate. We don't have enough already. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to be a Boston hate stream. I don't care. I don't, whatever. New Orleans is a great city. So my old boss, um, my uh, the guy that hired me actually at NVIDIA, um, he went to school in New Orleans. I don't know. What's what's the, is there a big party school in New Orleans? Maybe they're all party schools. I don't know. He went to a, he went to school in New Orleans. Okay. Um, Maybe it's Tulane. Maybe it's Tulane. Uh, this is like for his MBA, though, I think. This is a, it's a business school. I, again, I don't remember exactly this school. I don't want to fucking dox him either. Whatever. Anyway, he went to he went to this business school in, in New Orleans. And every time he talked about it, he would get this far off, wistful look in his eye. <laughs> like, they really, there's no time better than my time. <laughs> like, all he did apparently was just have... An incredible fucking four-year party set. I mean, he just had, you know, whatever whatever time place he was in New Orleans, 
It was like it was like the fucking most beautiful single tear flashback. Anytime he talked about it, um, it was truly like. And you know, this is a guy that's like super high up in Nvidia, clearing you know, I don't know six hundred k a year or something. Like this guy's doing really well, and it, like he's you know his life's good. He's not, but he he in his mind all that mattered was his time in fucking Tulane. Uh. Uh, my economics teacher talked about LSU so much. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's a fun, fun area. Uh, Tulane is the Harvard of the racists. Are you guys are using racist a lot all over the? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Six hundred K. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. I, I, <laughs> I do think he was making six hundred K for his position at uh, Nvidia. That's like a, you know, it's a fucking big company. Uh, Boston is a beautiful city. You must have had a terrible experience. Um, well, I I experienced the city. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like I looked at it with my own eyes, and I didn't think it was beautiful. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think that I, like, I didn't go to the wrong city. I didn't get off the wrong plane, if that's... <laughs> okay. uh, I I was there. I was there. I was there for, you know, I don't know, three, four days uh, for two, three years in a row or something like that. And, uh, and every time it was just so goddamn cold. And... I don't know. The food wasn't good. People weren't very friendly. I don't know. I just, listen, I traveled a lot for that job. I think I got a pretty good baseline. Maybe I had a, a lot of bad experiences, but Boston was one of the worst. Just being dead honest of the places I visited. Uh, when did you go? It was always winter. So I will say that. I never got to see a famed Boston summer. I was only in Boston for the winter. So, which is weird that they choose to host it there, but... Um, mm. boo -doo -boo 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 -boo. did you throw tea in the harbor of course <laughs> i love boston uh in comparison to how much i hate the uk <laughs> yeah, i love hamilton dude I think the reason the Bostonians didn't like me is that I would stroll around singing Hamilton songs and expecting them to join in. And they never did. And I was like, wow, this place is not what I was promised. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't know why you guys are such sourpusses when a fucking friendly out-of-towner a friendly L.A. native <laughs> shows up to sing Hamilton with you. That's what I thought they would all want to join me in my fucking one-man Broadway show. Um, I got so much hate from my friends for thinking Hamilton is cringe. Well, when? Hamilton had a, Hamilton had a phase during the, during the Obama years Hamilton, that's when millennials still had more of a say in the culture. <laughs> During the Obama years, Hamilton was cool. And then everyone later uh, retconned it to cringe. I mean, it, to be honest, it is, but I still like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's still fun. Uh, like, you know, dude, dude. I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. It's good. I like it. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. You can't fucking make me not like Hamilton. I like Hamilton. It's fun. Uh, it was cringe at first, but I think the day that it all changed was when um, it was this. Lin Manuel Miranda was riding high, and then he uploaded this fucking photo uh, of him biting his lip. <laughs> and once this happened, the culture shifted so radically, and then he became cringe. 
And then TikTok just ripped into him. And then Hamilton got hit in the fucking crossfire. This was a real cultural watershed moment. But I stand by him, Lynn manuel Miranda, and your crazy uploaded lip bite, lip bite selfie. Um, horrible goatee. <laughs> Dude, it always <laughs> it really does hit like it's like it fucking shocks you, dude. Huh? Oh. <laughs> it is worse the longer you look. <laughs> it's also funny that he like took it and uploaded it. You know, that's just the. It wasn't like a candid. No one caught it. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah interesting uh rdj wishes when he, he wishes he could have that goatee yeah i think he does uh where's the picture of him that looks like he needs to shit I, what, what does that mean I, you have a picture of lynn mimel randall looks like he needs to shit why do you have that get that off your phone uh, he's in his 60s in the house Wait, Lin-Manuel Miranda's in house? Is that true? Holy shit, he is in house In season 6 Wait, I have to get to season 6 then Uh, don't don't spoil me. Don't tell me anything about it. I just I want to get to season six, so I can see him in the show. That's hilarious. <laughs> wow, they really upped the guest stars after. I feel like the early seasons didn't have many guest stars. Uh, we'll watch one tonight. We'll watch one in an hour actually. Uh, at ten. Uh, he's a pretty consistent recurring character. Well, no spoilers then, Buckos. What else is happening? Um. Crisis fatigue? Interesting. When everything's a crisis, none, nothing is. More people than ever are afraid they're going... What is this? ...going to lose their job at some point this year. And that's only for the people who are lucky enough to already have a job. New entrants into the job market are struggling to get into roles that were desperate for workers just three years ago. If people do lose their jobs, they have record low savings to support themselves. So then why the fuck are people spending more than ever? For male These are great questions. <laughs> These are great questions. But everyone keeps telling me we're in the fucking middle of the immaculate conception landing and everything is great. Uh, it's the top priority for females. It's number two behind only clothing and accessories. Americans seem more stressed about money than ever before. 87% of Americans said that inflation and the rising cost. Four in 10 Americans say that money uh, affects them negatively and the, and the state of their mental health. The financial situation of the average American has gotten worse in the past 12 months. According to data from Equifax and the New York Fed, money that people saved during the pandemic is gone. And in its place, people are using credit cards and short-term loans to cover expenses. Cool. Buying or renting a house is more unaffordable than ever due to the trio of low availability, high mortgage rates, and high prices. And with an election on the horizon, people are worried that things will only get worse when appeasing voters is no longer top priority. That a lot of Americans simply stop looking for a job. Still, when it comes to unemployment, lower is better than higher. I'm happy I'm not American. Are you European? <laughs> Actually, are you Chinese? Are you Japanese? Are you in any of the countries on earth who are also experiencing economic turmoil? Because it's not its not an American-only problem right now. I got to be honest with you. Uh, Australian? Are you, are you Canadian? Are you... Uh, yeah, unless you're Norwegian, <laughs> you might have some problems. Uh, higher. But when everything is a crisis, nothing is. People have seen the headlines, and they just don't care anymore. 
Crisis fatigue is a real problem and it's costing you thousands of dollars every year, whether you realize it or not, for three different reasons. The first reason is that people who aren't catching up are giving- That is funny to be like, <laughs> oh, you have crisis fatigue? That's a crisis that's costing you thousands of dollars a year. <laughs> It's like, okay, well, that's not going to help. <laughs> Adding your crisis fatigue as a problem onto the pile. Uh... Giving up. If you think it's going to be hard to ever be financially comfortable, you are not alone. A survey of 2,000 young Americans conducted by Harris Poll for USA Today found that 65% of Gen Zers and 74% of Millennials believe that they are starting further behind financially than earlier generations. And according the to the boomers, yeah. the New York Post, one in five Americans now believe they will never be able to afford a home. There are two reasons for this pessimism. The first reason is simply because it's true. <laughs> Big financial objectives like homeowner. This, this video is crazy. This video is crazy. It's like these weird setups. Into <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, it's funny because like I, I agree with the facts in this video and I talk about this stuff all the time, but the way they're framing it is so interesting. <laughs> it's like the title, the title such a mislead on what it's about. And then, uh, <laughs> retirement or simply being debt free are becoming rarer. More Americans over the age of 75 are working than ever, according to data from the Labor Department. These were the people that had the opportunity to buy homes before they were several multiples of the average income. So if they couldn't escape the rat race, what hope do you have? The second reason is that there is a lot of money to be made off this pessimism. When people resign themselves to never achieving their financial goals, then there is less pressure to avoid taking on bad debt, spending recklessly, or putting off employment. Yeah. Well, now I'm kind of mad because this is like some things I already put in my predictions video. <laughs> now I'm kind of mad that I watched this, bro. I feel like this is like, uh, <laughs> uh, I just talked about this, bro. I just talked about how people are going to be fucking uh, taking on more debt than they can afford. I was like writing this fucking slide. It's pissing me off. Uh... According to the same New York Post survey, 40% of young Americans surveyed said they think that just, hitting the jackpot was the best chance they had of ever being able to afford a home. The lottery, huh? Lottery companies, online casinos, and get-rich-quick gurus have tapped into this desperation as an effective marketing strategy to put those that fall behind even further behind. Steak. Giving up and being financially irresponsible has, in a way, become something that is highly fashionable. Trends follow young people, and since young people are giving up on long-term financial goals in favor of short-term experiences, that has become the new normal. Luxury fashion is marketed as a way for affluent people to show off their means, but according to a survey by Bain Consulting, the largest group of customers shopping at luxury clothing stores are millennials followed by Gen Zers. Sheesh, you guys flexing? Wait, you guys are looking good? You guys are dripped out? Oh, you guys got that new watch? You got that ice? <laughs> you got the designer clothes? Fit pick, dude. Let me see a fit pick. Got the rolly on Klarna. <laughs> dude, that's a fucking rap bar. <laughs> got my rolly on Klarna, dude. <laughs> Dripping on credit. <laughs> uh, that's great uh, <laughs> dude actually oh someone should make that wait we make music around here someone make a parody rap song about fucking flexing on credit that's hilarious that's really funny a parody rap song about flexing on credit dude Aiden single handedly filled out the section the problem with Aiden is that he's just dumb fucking rich you guys only make 50k a month each from that podcast. 50 racks a month each. No expense. No expenses out of that. Uh <laughs> You should start a podcast. Yeah, that's the that's the takeaway. <laughs> like, 
Do you know Tiger Woods made a billion dollars off golf? I should play golf. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh... The people who have the least financial security are spending the most to try and fake the appearance of doing well that they will never be able to really achieve. Young people with basic jobs and no assets wearing LV and Supreme are cosplaying as people with financial security when all they are really nah, doing is hurting their financial situation even more. Even if you are personally maintaining a high level of financial discipline, crisis fatigue can still end up costing you money if you are trying to keep up with friends and colleagues who want to indulge in expensive activities. The terrible reality is that your life probably won't be as comfortable as the lives of older generations. And if that makes you want to stop playing a rigged game, that's fair. But it's only going to make your financial situation worse. So it's time to learn how money works to find out how financial crisis fatigue is costing you what's left of your financial future. Uh, this week's lesson I, is sponsored by Sheath Underwear. This is so... <laughs> The exact part where you say Jizzy is overspending on fucking clothes. <laughs> Just move the sheath sponsor to a different video and put something else here. You can't do direct to consumer fucking underwear brand. By far the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. <laughs> if you're sick of boxers that are too loose or briefs that are too tight, sheath is for you. I, the stretchy fabric is made right, out of a I, moisture wicking. That sounds Perfect awesome. Running, and they feel incredible. I can't recommend. Can I just check real quick uh, while we're on the subject? What is a sheath? What does sheath underwear cost? Interesting question. Sheath underwear shop. Let's get some boxer briefs. Thirty dollars <laughs> for one pair. <laughs> Bro, that's what will. This will get you. put on afterpay, bro. Put that shit on afterpay. Lock it down. This shit is comfy. And sheath enough. They're the official underwear sponsor of the UFC. You got trusted to. by many fighters and dorky money YouTubers alike. Go to sheathunderwear.com forward slash. That's why I like Rocket Money. Predictions video sponsored by Rocket Money. I'm saying ahead of time they already paid for it. Cha Ching, locked it in, baby. <laughs> That's why I like money because it's you canceling money. So that's it's it's uh, at the very least at least fits with the theme. <laughs> uh, can't delay the video anymore. Actually, that's a really good that's a really good point. If you are somebody who wants to see my twenty four predictions video, I pretty much can't cancel it because I signed the deal with Rocket Money and told them they were going to the predictions video. I told them the date, so. Uh, it really drastically increases my chances that I finish. That's what I've been working on it today. Um, uh, AI videos like these are why my power tired. I don't think this is an AI video at all. I think this is a human being created video. It is a faceless channel, but they've done some good stuff in the past. Honestly, I think the information in this video is 100% accurate, so I agree with it pretty much wholeheartedly. I just think it's funny the ad, and I think it's funny the the framing. The framing is so odd to me. Um, HMW and get them. Like I thought the video was going to be about how you know there's so there's such a deluge of information right now. There's so many crises that you could focus on, and as a human being, your brain can't handle all that, and it it, it can be stressful and cause you to tune out. And so I thought this video was going to be about like, hey, take a deep breath. Um, we have better access to information on the internet than ever before, and it's causing you to be overwhelmed. You don't have to have an, a strong opinion on every single fucking thing <laughs> because there's no way to hold all that stuff in your brain at once and fight for all those causes at once. And uh, But rather, this video is just like, yeah, those are all real problems, but also you thinking that <laughs> you having fatigue is also a problem that's going to make you poor. That's like, <laughs> why did they make the video like this? This video could have been about like how, you know... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, just more directly straightforward about how Gen Z and millennials are, are not being set up to succeed. Um, Atrioc low key goaded at melee. What is this? 
This is just an old video of me playing Melee from last year. Why, <laughs> why are you linking me this? Uh, I am low-key goaded in Melee. <laughs> that was clutch as hell. That is clutch as hell, bro. Oh, that was fun. Uh, the key is very low. Yeah, well, listen, top thirty-two, pack south. It's an all-time. It's an all-timer. <laughs> once you're top thirty-two, once you've made it to a day three bracket, you're set. You're locked. Thoughts on rivals two? Looks great. Uh, uh, amazing plays great. I, I won't get into it because I don't want to get addicted to uh, uh, platform fighter. <laughs> the only game in the past since League of Legends that ever made me rage is grinding slippy. Um, there will never ever be another melee player like Adrian. <laughs> uh, That's not true. AoE made you rage. No, I didn't rage at AoE. When did I rage at Age of Empires? Like, seriously rage. I think I made jokes about the French. Who doesn't? I, I, did, I, did, not, I did not actually rage at Age of Empires. No way. Like, real rage? No way. You guys are talking about stream, dude. Where it's like, ah, oh, fuck. It, no, it's not like, not like raging is raging, dude. Raging for me is when I get silent. <laughs> You know, if you want to see me rage, ask Stans, who was on my League of Legends team. Uh, if I'm raging, if I'm in a bad mood, that's when I go fucking dead silent. And I, and I just seethe. I fucking seethe. Uh, that's... <laughs> that's when I'm actually raging. If I'm fucking... Ah, no, wow. Oh, shit. Don't call me glizzy hands. <laughs> I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Do you understand? It's not, it's not, I'm not so fucking pressed. <laughs> uh, every friend group has the silent razor and you can feel it in the air. <laughs> okay. But stands on the flip side had positive toxicity. No, wait. Toxic positivity. Sorry. <laughs> Toxic positivity. Okay. Uh, which is, in my case, just as bad. Where someone is being extra fake nice when they're in a bad mood and, and <laughs> mad at their team. That's, ooh, ah, it's so frustrating. Uh, my friend was the quiet rager. But anyway, the worst part of being the quiet rager is not the rage. The rage fuels you, Okay. All great gamers know that you have to get that rate. You have to you have that secret feeling of like, I can fuck this guy. I can win. You have to have that, I feel like, to push yourself to fucking grind. Um, the rage is the problem. The quiet is the problem because on a team game, you got to communicate. And if I'm the mid laner, the captain of the team, not all mid laners are the captain, but I was the captain, and I don't talk, I just go fucking dead silent. That's like so bad. <laughs> it was honestly so bad. I'm not even telling people. I'm not pinging. I'm not. I'm just. You know. That's not. That's solo queue mentality. You can't do that in a fucking game. Um. But I just couldn't respond to Stan saying, "Hey guys, don't worry. We got this late. <laughs> We're down fucking 18 kills. <laughs> Stan's dies again under tower. <laughs> like, Fucker. Fucking don't die. Uh." <laughs> <laughs> uh, aren't you also low key good at LOL? No, I'm not good at LOL anymore. But I was for anim for North America. I, I have to qualify that. Nobody was ever actually good at League of Legends outside of five Europeans, Chinese players, and Koreans. <laughs> Nobody's ever actually been good. Um, but I'm still. You know, I, I what I compare myself now to gaming wise is only streamers. Okay, it's a di it's a different class. Okay, it's a protected class of like, um, 
like endangered animals that never learned how to survive on their own. <laughs> and among streamers, my face fucking rocks the world. Uh, dude, can we watch some Cine 2 Neural tonight? I actually do kind of want to play Cine 2 Neural, but... Okay, so here's the plan. I, I'm running out of time, which I fucked up, as I always do, because I like talking too much. Um, I wanted to play Portal 3 Revolution, the new Portal game. Uh, but now I'm feeling like I'm not going to be able to do that and House, and I really want to watch House. So, um, perhaps I will go live tomorrow and play Portal and try to beat the whole thing in one day. What if I can't end stream until I beat Portal? What's tomorrow, Friday? Would that be problematic at all? Tomorrow, I have to work out, and then what? Just go live. Can't end stream until I beat Portal. That sounds good. Um, and then tonight, I can do no double date. No. Portal's like a two-hour game. I mean, I heard Portal Revolution is more like an eight-hour game. This is the new, this is the new Portal Revolution. Um... Uh, How are you too lazy to play Portal? I'm not too lazy to play Portal. I just can't play Portal tonight because then I'll skip House and I really want to watch House. Um, Taiwan live feed? That's Saturday. <gasps> but Taiwan's ahead, right? Maybe I can play Portal into a super long stream while also updating the Taiwan elections. That could be sick. You've watched so much House come on. Yeah, but you're trying to rush me into Portal without realizing that it's an eight-hour game, and so we'll play, like, the first beginning of it, and then it won't... Well, then what? Then we'll just stop? That's not fun. I want to do House tonight and then play all of Portal in one stream. Listen, the one piece of advice XUC gave me when I was having to pick him up for his own show <laughs> and drive him to an event that he was late for and promised he'd be there was that he said, if you're going to play a single-player game, try to beat it in one stream. That's what he said. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he also said a lot of insane shit about his life that I will never tell. But that is what, uh, that is the main thing. Um, uh, he also said, you got to take the Gamba offers when they come in. Uh, do, do you think... We would all be... Don't try to fucking bait me. Um, I don't think you've ever beaten a single player game in one stream. You're a fucking fake fan. Life fetus brain, you're a fake fan. You think I've never beat a single player game in one stream? Deuces, bro. Deuces. Fake. Arkham Asylum. <laughs> no, uh, play, are you at Witch's House, bro? Remember Witch's House? Remember 12 Minutes? Viewfinder? There's like a fucking hundred puzzle games. Uh, Hitman. Hitman, I beat, I beat that game many times in one stream. <laughs> bro, I beat Hitman in fucking uh, 30 minutes. First person in the world, actually, to beat it under 30. Interesting. Interesting. People don't talk about that enough. Uh, Hitman doesn't count. So the ones I do don't count. Uh, anyway, Viewfinder, by the way. Plenty. There's plenty, bro. There's so, there's so many. Railbound. We did Railbound in one stream, bro. We did... Uh, there's like a bazillion. There's a gajillion, dude. There's so many. I don't even... Fury. We did Fury in one stream. Storyteller we did in one stream. Uh, Railbound was one stream. It was two videos, I think. I could be wrong. I could be wrong because I might have done the very beginning on one other stream, but basically all of it was one stream. Um, Popathon is not a game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Storyteller added new content. That's why I played it again. Um, Tree Sentinel in one stream. That was a whole game. 
Scorn? <laughs> Dude, I can't believe I played Scorn. I can't believe I fucking played Scorn. Why why did I even think that'd be fun? I don't even I don't like any part of that. And I was like, yeah, let me play Scorn. Let me try to fucking force Scorn down mid. That took me so long to finally say, like, this is so stupid. Way waste my time. Uh and then every joke from chat was just like, you're really scorning it up. <laughs> they just like they would put scorn in movie titles and man, we were just so desperate for any crumb of content or humor in that fucking game. That was so bad. That was such a bad experience, that game. Um Completed Minecraft in one stream. I did do that. I did beat Minecraft. I've never beaten Minecraft on my own. That could be kind of fun. <laughs> Like, I've never done it. Not even close. Um, I've never, ever, ever done it. It's not fun. How can Minecraft not be fun? Do you have is all the joy and light left your eyes and life? Minecraft, dude. Tommy in it. Dream. Wilbur Soot. Just think about all the great people. Who have come from the Minecraft community uh, to beat the game in five hours is not fun. Not fun for you. Might be fun for me. Okay. Do, 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 do. Connor, Connor eats pants. Uh, I used to be a Minecraft YouTube mod for a big speedrunner, and it sucked the joy out of the game. <laughs> Bro did two tours defending Dream on forums and is now fucking burnt out. <laughs> Bro was arguing, no, you don't understand the mathematicians. Fucking typing up a storm. Burnt out your whole childhood. Sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, did you see the guy who tried to sell Queen Elizabeth's walking stick and ended up getting charged with fraud? Bro, she's dead. Let the man sell the walking stick. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't even real. <laughs> he just... He just found a walking stick and said it was used by the queen and then they arrested him for fraud. That's funny. Whatever, dude. He's just grustling. Christ, dude. <laughs> uh, whenever I'm out in public and someone asks for a picture, I say, wait, I've got um, signed mogul merch hoodies signed by Ludwig in my car. <laughs> uh, I'll give them to you for 300 bucks. <laughs> Okay? And I do that all the time. I make a little extra bunny. I, they're not real. That's fucking fake old hoodies that I use when I'm climbing and I just fucking sign them. Uh, YouTube comments incoming. <laughs> it's actually so fucking annoying because ever since I called out that the fucking idiot comments who were serious about it, now there's a million more who are joking who are like, wow, it is real that he does this. He really, really does charge his fans and steal. And then, but then it, there's people that weren't there for this stream you know, or the streams where I'm making fun of it. And so they don't know the joke. So they don't get in on the joke. So they actually think there's like 80 people confirming it's real. There's no way they could all be collectively on the same. It's just so fucked up. <laughs> it's fucked up what you're doing. Um. Anyway, let me do a quick fucking uh, Cine 2 Nerdle battle, okay? And then we're going to watch House. Uh, uh, that's, that's what I was. That's, that's the plan, all right? That's the fucking plan. We're vibing today. Well, Fant is our first opponent. And I'm going to do my classic bands of Michael Caine, Harrison Ford, not Josephine Langford, and Will Smith. Bom, 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 Cine 2 Nerdle battles. Round two, fight. Explain the gambit. I can only explain it to you by doing it, okay? You can't be told what the matrix is. Uh, you have to see it with your own eyes. 
Clueless, 1995. Where are we going from Clueless? Mm, where are we going from Clueless? A lot of people in this movie. Uh, we're going shopping. Alicia Silverstone in The Crush. I don't know shit about The Crush, I'll be honest with you. I don't know this movie at all. Um, never heard of it. So I will go Batman and Robin, which she is also in. And maybe he's got an Alicia Silverstone kill shot. Maybe. If you are prepared, prepped. But if not, we can get into a real game. I watched you play for hours. I still don't understand it. I will try to explain it to you. There's a movie, right? It's like tennis. <laughs> oh, Blast from the Past. Wait, is this guy in chat? <laughs> Blast from the Past is Brendan Fraser. Let's go to The Mummy. One of my favorite. Oh, The Mummy, 1999. One of my favorite movies of all time. Um, a movie will appear, and then they'll hit it over to you with a movie, and you have to hit it back by saying another movie that shares a common actor, at which point their name will appear, connecting the movies, and an X will appear. And if you get to three X's, that, that actor is no longer allowed. Rachel Weisz, the constant gardener. Uh, all I know is she married Daniel Craig. But I don't know anything else about... I don't know who else is in this movie. Uh, okay. We'll go back to Mummy Returns. do 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 Fred Claus, 2007. Who's in Fred Claus? Uh, I don't know who's in. Oh, is it Vince Vaughn? The internship. Nice! Nice, 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 nice. Who's in Fred Claus? Fred. <laughs> the internship. A movie that was just propaganda for Google. <laughs> This whole movie's about how cool it is to work at Google. Uh, and Google was involved in the production of the movie. Night at the Museum. Let's go Ben Stiller. Let's go the cable guy. Mm, it was a decent movie. It, it, it was an inoffensive movie. I mean, it's like a true four or a five. <laughs> Midnight in Paris, Woody Allen. Let's go... Let's go, isn't this, um, yeah, Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams, Midnight in Paris, pretty good movie. Obviously, Woody Allen has his problems. Uh, if you separate art from artists, uh, Midnight in Paris was a good movie. Have you watched Alpha Go? Could be a fun react on stream, fully available on YouTube officially. Uh, yeah, I watched Alpha Go a long time ago. Um, there's that famous move. The Lee Seidel, like, move 24 or whatever, where the world is shocked because he beats a computer. It's pretty based. Baby Mama. Uh, I, oh, I need to just go date night or something because I'm fucking freaking out. Tina Fey! Alpha, go to the polls. Dude, dude. Admission. Ooh, admission. I believe this has... Is it John Hamm? John Ham's John Ham? Who's in this movie? I might need a cast. I don't, I've never seen this movie. It was not. Uh, it's got Paul Rudd. We'll go dinner for schmucks, I guess. Uh, never heard of this movie. Admission. Dan in real life with Steve Carell. Um... Okay. Ooh, Anchorman, I guess. Steve Carell. I could do like Bruce Almighty. Bruce, what's the, what's, uh, Evan Almighty. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the Steve Carell kill shot? Hmm. I've been on defense for sure. I've been on defense this game. The 40-year-old version is not too bad, though. Uh, fun way out of 40-year-old version. This is the first movie Kevin Hart was in. And he does a pretty good job. Uh, we can go Central Intelligence. 
Get me into the in the rock heart verse. Uh. All I know about this movie, I never actually saw it, is the promo where the rock is like badly CGI to be really, really fat in high school. And they throw him out of the locker room onto the gym floor and he like squeaks across the the other guys. Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, shooter. Um, the other guys is a rock movie without Kevin Hart. So true. Daddy's home. All right, Mark Wahlberg kill shot. Mm, oh. The Gambler, 2014. Low key, a movie I really like. Probably my favorite Mark Wahlberg's performance. Do you know why I like this movie? It's because it's the only movie where Mark Wahlberg is allowed to play a loser. <laughs> Can I think of another one? Mark Wahlberg does not try to look cool in this movie. He plays a fucking loser. <laughs> a gambling addicted loser. And he's actually pretty good at it when he doesn't like try to always fucking... The Babe with John Goodman? I don't... I don't, I don't know this. Uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane, I guess. I don't. I'm, I'm on defense because I don't. They pick a lot of movies I really just don't know. Um, the Departed? No, he looks cool in The Departed. Ted, he looks cool in Ted. He doesn't. I mean, in, he's still. What I'm saying is, he seems like an actual person you don't want to be. <laughs> in Ted, he like he ends up with the hot girl and has fun jokes the whole time. It's not. It's not the same as like in The Gambler, he is ending his bad. I guess it's all right, but his move. King Ralph? Dude, I'm fucked. Uh, might be a skip, bro. I, I, King Ralph. Never heard of that shit. Um, this guy watched Ted. I did watch Ted. I won't, I, won't, I won't deny it. I also watched A Million Ways to Die in the West, which is one of the worst movies I've ever fucking seen in my life. Uh, this guy's gonna skip me a little bit of draw situation how does this guy know King Ralph but <laughs> no way out oh, he's just dropping fucking bombs over Baghdad <laughs> alright I'll take a skip I'll take a skip Uh, you like the million ways to die in the west really all right, no hate, bro. I'm no hate. No hate. But uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> but, I mean, I like to put Dazzle, and critics didn't like that. So I've always realized that, like, in my mind, Bedazzle is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen, and people think it's bad. So it's like, whatever. I'm... Opinions are opinions, bro. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> bro. You got to get out of the first one. You got to get out of the first one. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, everybody's got movies they grew up with that they probably recognize are not classically good, but they pure, pure love them. There's nothing wrong with that. Remember the Titans. Uh, remember the Titans, Al Pacino. Let's go Scent of a Woman. She had a great ass. Wait, is not Al Pacino in this? I'm fucking crazy. Oh, I'm crazy. <laughs> Wait, give me a cast. What am I? Oh, Denzel Washington. What am I thinking of? What am I? Any given Sunday. Uh, wait. Ca fucking, oh my God. Denzel Washington. Um... What am I? Oh, we're just gonna go Scream Four, bro. <laughs> Off of Hayden Panettiere. Uh, don't say Denzel Washington movies. I know Denzel Washington movies. I'm just thinking of a specific one that I thought. All right, wait. Is there a Hayden? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, oh man. Fuck. What's the movie? Oh shit. There's a movie where um, this nerdy guy goes on a date with Hayden Panettiere. <sighs> Beth Cooper. I love you, Beth Cooper. That's what I'm thinking of. 
Scooby-Doo Matthew Lillard. Uh, I'll do Scooby-Doo too. <laughs> Scooby, just give me Monsters Unleashed, bro. How about that? <laughs> uh, just say every Scooby-Doo movie. Well, I don't think he's in all of them. Shoo doo, shoo doo, shoo doo. Your favorite Scooby Doo? I hate this movie. <laughs> it's very so stupid. Agent Cody Banks. All right, we're going to go a classic. Big Fat Liar 2002 with Frankie Muniz. Paul Giamatti as well as the eponymous Big Fat Liar. And I think, actually, Amanda Bynes. I think it's Amanda Bynes. Amanda, 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 show. Um, so you can, I mean, Big Fat Liar is actually a good one to have in the old quiver. Because there's a lot of times I get caught in the Bynes universe. Frankie, Mew, Agent Cody Banks 2, is there a third one? No. There wasn't. Well, I can't get out of this. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> what the fuck, bro? I... <laughs> I can't get out of this. Malcolm in the Middle is not a fucking movie. I, I think Frankie Muniz, he quit acting, right? I thought he famously tweeted like, I did two Cody Banks, I got a $30 million house, and now I quit acting, so fuck you. Didn't... Someone like made fun of him, and he's like... <laughs> I think that's what happened, bro. Another, another fucking draw. Yeah, he races cars. Wait, let me let, actually pause this. Cancel, cancel. I want to see Frankie Muniz's tweet. Frankie Muniz tweet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was really mean-spirited, actually. <laughs> uh, someone said, your acting is just awful. Sorry, but it is. Yeah, but being retired with $40 million at 19 has not been awful. Good luck moving out of your mom's house before you're 35. <laughs> he hit him with an XQC, bro. He hit him with your house is on my wrist. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's an all-timer. That's like, that's like 20 years, I mean, 10 years ago. Uh, other guy did start it. Other guy did start it, you know? Fuck around, find out. Doesn't he drive F1 cars now? I mean, he's not an F1 racer. He's not, like, in the league. But, yeah, I think he drives as a hobby. Because he's rich. Uh, that's the ninja. <laughs> Dude, ninja? Prime ninja saying he was going to buy his someone's parents' house and foreclose on it at the bank? That's a, cra <laughs> that's a crazy... That was that was a crazy ninja era, dude. Uh, clueless. Alicia Silverstone. Let's go Batman and Robin again because I like it. And Robin. And then we can get to Schwarzenegger and other things I like. Ocean's Eleven, George Clooney. What could be a fun route out of Ocean's Eleven, George Clooney? Uh, let's do the informant exclamation points with Matt Damon and Steven Soderbergh uh, as the director. The Departed. All right, now a Matt Damon kill shot could be The Great Wall. 2016, his sellout to China movie where he took an amazingly fat paycheck to stand in front of a CGI Great Wall. Uh... Willem Dafoe was in that? I actually didn't know that. Uh, Willem Dafoe, Spider-Man. Let's go Whiplash off J. Jonah Jameson. You guys, when I said I didn't know Willem Dafoe was in that, I'm talking about The Great Wall, not fucking Spider-Man, bro. <laughs> He's the goblin! Question mark, question mark, question mark! He's the fucking goblin! 
<laughs> I'm gonna fuck. I need I need fucking 15 seconds because you threw me off. Fucking stupid ass. God damn it. Uh, Chris Evans is in this, right? Or no? Who? I don't know who the new. Is it Michael B. Jordan? Thank God. I'm. <laughs> uh, you milled my skip, bro. Rocky Five, 1990. Sylvester Stallone. Rocky Five. <sighs> Can I do like blood sport? No. All right. Well, I'm just we're going we're going to the fucking universe then. I'll do Balboa. You hit me with any Rocky, I hit you with a perfect out. Creed three. You didn't even give me an out. All right. Well, then I'll I'll put you in fucking Rocky one. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh come on. There's nothing. Okay, uh, well, I'm kind of fucked. I'll go to Fruitville Station. <laughs> mm. yeah, but he's not even in it like a producer or something? Stallone wasn't, he completely cut him out of uh, the Creed movies? All right, Black Panther. Um, Black Panther. Obviously, let's go out of its most famous white actor. <laughs> uh, Martin Freeman. Uh, and get over to The Hobbit. He hated Creed 3's directions. Wasn't Creed 3 like super well received? Didn't everyone kind of say Creed 3 was kind of hype? Had a, uh, well, it was, it was an actual villain, right? Uh, the Hobbit, uh, Martin Freeman kill shots. Did they make a Sherlock movie? No, not I me. Mean, they did, but not with him. Uh, the Hobbit. Battle of the Five Armies, bro. You figure it out. Forty-four links. <laughs> Just pick one. Oh, the first Hobbit. I might be fucked. I'm skipping. I'm skipping. I'm skipping. You have a path out. You have a path out. Frosty the Snowman, nineteen sixty-nine. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> this is a movie you've seen? <laughs> Frosty the Snowman, 1969. How about Frosty Returns? All right, give me cast. Uh, Jackie Vernon. <laughs> How about The Godfather, huh? Who who did the crossover? <laughs> How about... No, all right, you got me. Uh, his name is Paul Freeze. <laughs> Uh, wait, is that the that's the claymation Frosty? That was a great movie. I like that movie. I like the claymation Frosty, the claymation Rudolph, and the claymation. Um, what's the one with the? I guess that's Rudolph, right? I'm Mister Heat. Miser. What, what, that's the. Mm, clue, 1985. Uh, Tim Robbins. Actually, is there is there a Knives Out or Knives Out? Wait, who's Tim Robbins in? Fuck. Uh, oh, he's in... Um, Dude, why am I blanking? <laughs> oh, you know what he's in? He's in Home Alone. <laughs> At the very least, he's in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Tim Curry. Sorry, Tim Curry. Why am I saying Tim Robbins? Tim Robbins is Mean Girls. Tim Curry is Home Alone 2. Uh, he's the fucking funny hotel clerk <laughs> with a weird smug smile. <laughs> uh... The best part of that movie is when they he's playing the gangster film on the... Oh, okay. All right. Real battle. Today's starting movie are Clue and Clueless. Yeah, let me get more Let me get more Tim Curry movies before I move on. I should not I should know a lot of Tim Curry if I'm going to play this. I need to be like Steph Curry with the shot on Tim Curry's uh, whole repertoire. So let's see. Tim Curry movies. 
Bro did he did Outback. He did Ribbit. He did he did a bunch of fucking dog shit animated films. Uh that's for damn sure. He did Garfield a Tale of Two Kitties. He did Charlie's Angels 2000. I know that movie. He did Barbie Nutcracker. <laughs> He did the Rugrats movie. Um, all right. Annie, Oliver Twist, Three Musketeers. That's a good movie. He did a movie called Four Dogs Playing Poker <laughs> with Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm definitely playing that. Four Dogs Playing Poker. Wow. Okay, you got it. Fern Gully is goaded. I prefer the IRL version, Avatar. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, I'm Googling Gary. Sorry. No, wait. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm Googling Gary. I'm losing my fucking spot. Did I lose? <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, that's uh, annoying. That's annoying. Smith. Ford. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, all right, give me, give me, give me way out here. I don't think you lost. It still says one loss. I think it'll probably update. It'll probably update uh, as it's happening live. Hi, Big Air. Smith Monday. Well, we're gonna watch House here in about six minutes. This might be my last round. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Well, guess what? Four dogs playing poker. What? Dogs playing? It's not in here. It's not in here. <laughs> oh, the research for nothing. Four dogs playing poker is not in the list. That's fucked up. It's got Forrest Whitaker in it, dude. He won an Oscar. Did you try the word for? I wrote dogs playing poker. Look. It's not in there. It's not in there, bro. Uh, Goodfellas. Score sleazy. Let's do... Let's do Departed because I like it. Unless I want to do... No, I'll go Departed. Departed. Should have gone Barbie Nutcracker. I don't even think it's in there, dude. I don't even think it's in there. Uh, let's find out. Barbie Nutcracker. No, dude. They're cutting Tim Curry's whole fucking thing out. The Age of Innocence. Uh, let's do Silence. Get off that, motherfucker. Uh, how is this played? Movie? I think Silence has... Um, Liam Neeson in it, and it does. Jay Cox, dude. Yo, it's Jay Cox. You've heard of Jay Z? Well, here's Jay Cox. <laughs> it's a whole different direction. Uh, we did burn his skip. The Gray with Liam Neeson. Now, that's good. The problem is, Liam Neeson has a million movies. Uh, but I am due for my quota today. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just playing the game. I'm just playing the game. The real smart answer was taken to, uh, Gandhi 1982 with Ben Kingsley. Okay, fine. Kingsley me. The Wonder Boys with Robert Downey Jr. RDJ. Who else is in the Wonder Boys? Um, just checking. Just checking. Okay. Well, then we'll do Doolittle. Don't love it, but. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Chaplin, 1992. I think I can get out of this. Wait. Uh. All right, you fucking. <laughs> uh, Anthony Hopkins, bitch. God damn it. Wait. Fracture, 2007. If you haven't seen this movie, I fucking love it. This is uh, young Ryan Gosling opposite Anthony Hopkins, master of his craft. Um, Gosling as a young lawyer, Anthony Hopkins as an old murderer. <laughs> and they have a crackling back and forth energy. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. Okay, Anthony Hopkins kill shot. Um... Can also obviously just do Red Dragon, right? Red Dragon. I am not thinking of Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> I am 100% thinking of Fracture. Legend of the Red Dragon. <laughs> He's just putting other movies with Red Dragon in the title. <laughs> no. No, bro. They're not connected. That's not how it works. All right, last one. Last one, last one, last one in the house. Last one. Clatchley. Clue, 1985. Every fucking movie I looked up. What was it? Barnyard? I thought that's what he was in. Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Um, Nebraska with Devin Ratray. I don't know this movie. Oceans 11, Oceans 12, Endgame, Avengers, Scary Movie, Movie 43. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nice, dude. The list works. Uh, and it's from Saul himself. American Gigolo, 1980, with Richard Gere. Uh, we can do Pretty Woman, but I don't know anywhere other. I mean, I could cast this. The problem is he gets double cast. I'm on the back foot with double cast. So I'll just do Pretty Woman and... Um, and if you have a Richard Gear, help me out. I could do Primal Fear. I could do um, Rhapsody in August 1991. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. I tried a bunch of things. Give me, give me a cast. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> Okay, Kurosawa, we'll do Seven Samurai, dude. 1954. <laughs> now we're in fucking old Japanese films. Fine, dude, fine. That's how you want to play it? Hell in the Pacific, 1968. Of course, why not? We've all seen this classic. Uh, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Pacific Rim, <laughs> Pacific Heights, <laughs> Operation Pacific. Oh, come on. Godfather. Skip, skip. You figure it out. Hell in the Pacific, 1968, 0.0 .0 off of Toshiro Mifune. The man who shot Liberty Valance, 1962. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't know this movie. Um, let's do Planet of the Apes, huh? 1968. Yes! I'm just going off years, bro. God damn. This guy can play. Oh, he's not. I burn, at least I burned a lifeline. At least a god can bleed. A Matter of Life and Death, 1946. I don't fucking know, dude. Let's go Ben-Hur. <laughs> no, Ben-Hur. 
Wait, what? Dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, bitch. Mrs. M okay, now I'm fucking lost. On the waterfront, 1954. Come on. Um, World War II. <laughs> uh, William Wyler. Uh, Dancing in the Rain. No, Singing in the Rain. Give me time. In the rain. Singing in the rain. Come on, really? Who the fuck? Uh, I can't think of any older movie than that. <laughs> All right, you got me. <laughs> oh, you got me. You got me. You got me. Insane. Insane. God, what a, what a, what a, I'll do one more. Inside Asada. <laughs> yeah. uh, playing versus Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, dude, fucking Joe Biden was roasting me on fucking Cine to Nerdle, dude. He was playing all his fucking childhood classics. Clue. All right. I, I, I looked up all of Tim Curry's movies and they're all not in this fucking thing. So we're going to go back to Home Alone 2. Uh, lost in fucking New York. How do you know if someone's a Google Gary? If they use their phone or uh, a cheat, you can't know. But for most people, it'll pop up Googling Gary if they switch tabs. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, he banned Tim Curry? Okay, well... Susan Sarandon is in uh, Alien. No, I'm thinking of fucking. All right, skip. Susan Sarandon is in a lot of movies. Um, I'm thinking of. Uh... Oh, is that is it Meatloaf? Wait, where does it say Meatloaf? Oh, Meatloaf, dude! I could have gone to Fight Club or something. Uh, Dead Man Walking. I don't know this movie. Uh, any chance? Any chance? Give me, give me time. Dead Man Walking. What else is Susan Sarandon in that I would know? I feel like a lot of movies. Wasn't she? Susan Sarandon. She's like a bad guy in a lot of movies. Uh, no, I got nothing. All right, man. We'll play uh, oh, Thelma and Louise. Yeah, great, great example. Oh, right, let's watch House. Let's watch House. Uh, she's a bad bitch in real life, too. Yeah, I, I remember seeing her because, um, who's the hilarious guy? Uh, hilarious. The only funny Canadian. <laughs> the only funny Canadian, Nathan, for you. Yes. Nathan brings her out uh, as a talk show guest. Uh, Nathan Fielder did a bit where he's like, I don't have any funny stories, so I hired Susan Sarandon to do the interview for me. And that was very funny. It was great. Uh, Jim Carrey is funny. Yeah, but he's honorary American. We don't, we, we claimed him. Where does Jim Carrey live? I'll ask you that. LA. <laughs> okay? So let's that's what we're talking about. Norm McDonald also honorary American. Uh I uh I saw Norm McDonald perform live like less than a year before he passed and he was still great. And I'm super glad I got to see that. It was me and Ari both got to see him. We got to see him in a comedy show in San Jose. It was really cool. Uh, he was super funny. Um, let's see here. I'm going to watch a little bit of House MD. House MD Nights. So 
So if you'd like to, go grab some snackies or a drink. I'll run a quick ad. And then we're going to relax and watch out what happened. Hopefully this episode will be a little less depressing. Because the last one, uh, warning, spoiler and content warning, Kuttner killed himself because the real life actor went to go work with Obama, Cal Penn. And so hopefully this episode a little a little more lighthearted. You know, maybe House's leggy will hurt you and he'll do something stupid. Um... Yeah, it was Obama's fault. One of the worst things Obama ever did during his presidency was uh, cause the Cutner character to die. Mm. Let's pull up. That tan suit wearing POS. <laughs> Dude. Between the tan suit and Kuttner, I don't see how anyone voted for him, bro. I don't see how he won re-election. I'm Jay. I don't, I don't fucking get it. That's a that's a betrayal. President Pupara. <laughs> <laughs> 